Hello, this is Richard Pierce from Finextra TV, and I'm joined today by George Georgia Stewart, who's co-founder of Timolo. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Very well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we had a chat last week and I was excited about the solution that you guys are doing. Um, so I was hoping to share this with the Finextra audience. Tell us a little bit more about you, first of all, and where what the genesis of this idea was. Um, okay, cool. So uh, my name is obviously Georgia. I am one of three co-founders of Tomello, um, which is a platform that helps pension providers and investment platforms to engage their underlying investors with issues that they care about, like climate change or gender equality. Um, me and both of my co-founders actually met and started off Tomello at university. So we were all at Cambridge uh, working specifically on a sustainable investment campaign at the university. So trying to get them uh, to think about where they're putting their endowment, which at the time was six billion pounds, so it was a significant pot of money, um, trying to get them to be more transparent about where that was invested um, and how they were engaging with the companies that they're invested in, like British American Tobacco or BP or Shell, um, on issues that were really important to the student body, like gender equality and healthcare and climate change. So it's, it's been a kind of long evolution from that grassroots NGO type background to um, what is still a very impact driven company but much more tech focused. Okay so so you basically were there you had that um, uh, that desire if you like as students to uh, to, to switch that fund uh, towards those particular causes what was stopping that from you know from being uh, you know if you will made real and, and what made you therefore create the company? That's a great question. Um, I guess the investment system or the investment industry, the financial sector in general, is pretty opaque as it stands relative to other industries. So, you know, we, can see, we as consumers know where our food comes from, we know where our clothes are made, your supply chains are becoming increasingly transparent. And, and it, also in banking now, with open banking, it's much more clear about your finances and you have more control over them. Um, but then when you look at the investment sector, it's very, very opaque, it's very slow moving, it's a very traditional industry um, with some very important kind of experts who people don't know much about. Um, and so things um, are not particularly transparent and they're slow to change. And especially when you're looking at kind of really big institutions like Cambridge University, who've got a reputation to uphold, um, they're wary about coming out and making statements about investing in specific companies. Um, and I think beyond that, um, sustainable investing is difficult because it's very subjective. You know, Shell is um, an oil company, but um, they do fantastic things in the renewable energy space as well. And they will be part of the transition to a sustainable future, probably. Um, so it's difficult to know whether you should want one should be invested in them or not, um, which is why as a campaign, we were much more focused not on where the money was invested, but on wherever we were invested, making sure that we engaged on issues like climate change. So going to these companies, telling them we cared, voting at board meetings, um, that was really where the pressure was coming for from us, rather than saying you should invest here and not here, because that's it's it's too binary, I think. Fantastic. So so tell us a bit more then about Timolo and the solution. So how are you addressing the you know these areas that you've just un unpacked? So what we are really um, passionate about is giving a voice, like I just described, to um, the end investor. So in most cases, the people that have the right to vote at a company uh, board meeting are, are the fund managers or the pension providers, the kind of institution that sits in between you as an as a end investor and the company you're invested in. And these companies are things that are touch your life in lots of different ways and it might be meaningful ways or less meaningful ways so things like uh, Starbucks where you buy a coffee or train line where you book your transport but it's also kind of the pharmaceutical company producing the medicines that are curing your parents or your grandparents or your friends from diseases like cancer or, or others so you know it, it's, it's shallow and deep meaningful and not and there are some things that you might want to really have a say in um, about gender equality or climate change or healthcare, whatever it is. And what we want is to give that voice to the underlying investor, so to the person putting their money into the chain at the end of the line. Um, so to do that, we work with pension providers um, to help them give uh, software to their underlying investors that allows them to see what's going on, see what companies they're invested in, and then have a voice 
question at Microsoft, for example, on whether they should elect another woman to the board or you know anything like that. Gotcha. So you're kindly going to show us um, a little sort of uh, demo, I think, or, or just a, a couple of screenshots, because it's kind of hard sometimes to see how these software solutions make sense. And I know you're switching over to that now. So let's have a look and talk me talk me through it. And, uh, you know, if I was, you know, that end investor that you just described. Great. So can you see my dashboard? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so this is um, just a snippet of the product, um, but it shows you a dashboard that we give to individual investors um, and they would access this through the investment apps they already have or through the pension portal that they already use with their pension provider. So we're expecting to service people you know, where they already are, where they're already thinking about their investments. Um, and that's why it's, you know, it's not colourful. It, this is a white label version and you would expect as a consumer to see this in the branding of whatever provider you currently use for your investments and oh. um, what you get is um, a list of the underlying companies that you own um, in this tab on, on the left here so it's a breakdown of all the individual companies held within your pension or within your investment portfolio um, and we keep it really simple so we're kind of aggregating across all the many funds you might own just to show you one holistic view um, of which stocks you own like Netflix or Microsoft or Nike as you see here for example um, and that's really what this uh, tab at the bottom is representing which is that your portfolio and, and on the face of it your investments might be quite complicated because you might have you know lots of different funds with many many different companies it could be in the thousands in your pension for example um, and so we're just trying to break that down to show you the key information and focusing on individual companies rather than kind of complicated fund names um, or the financials. We're really focused on uh, the companies and the issues at those companies rather than the other things like performance uh, and valuation, which we expect um, your investment provider to, to be sharing that information with you. So um, on the right here, you can also see uh, open votes. And this is really where we have pulled out um, questions that are being asked to the board of these individual companies. So you see Microsoft on the left, this person owns, um, it's, it makes up 2.4% of their portfolio. And on the right here, we've pulled through a question um, that was asked to Microsoft's board back in December about um, the, the median gender pay gap and whether they're planning to release more information on that issue or not. And then below, you can see a question put to ExxonMobil, for example, on their um, intentions to reduce uh, their total carbon footprint. And so you as an individual investor could click on any of these um, votes and have your say, which we then send to um, to that company and to the fund manager to make sure that your voice is heard along with the other kind of millions of people in the UK that own a pension. And so this is an individual platform, but the idea is that your voice is combined with the voices of the other you know, 45 million people in the UK that have a pension making up two, over two trillion um, of so assets in the UK that, alone. That normal um, prospectus pack coming through, tons of sort of opaque information saying, would you like to vote or not? And everybody just chucking it in the bin, thinking their voice has no uh, impact whatsoever. You're surfacing it here and then they're able to make a contribution. How do you distill out, you know, there's on the Microsoft uh, item there, there's one, uh, Exxon, there's one. Clearly, there would be a bag of, uh, of, of options mm. that you could vote on. How do you distill out to those particular ones? So uh, we have, um, I guess, two points on that. At the moment, uh, because we're a fairly early uh, stage company, we, we try to focus. Um, so we're focused on environmental, social and particularly controversial governance votes. So, so that means we're focusing on issues um, that the average person really cares about, like, like, like climate change or gender equality, health care, um, uh, CEO pay, for example. So we've spoken to lots of people and have a good idea of the themes that people are particularly interested in. So we're not focusing on um, the more uh, regular votes, like whether we are re-electing um, a kind of random director or not. And, and hopefully that's something that we can encompass in the future. Um, and we will try and make it a holistic platform where people can vote on anything they like. But at the moment, we do focus on those um, more controversial um, and kind of on trend issues, I suppose. Uh, beyond that, we also have a, filtra a Sorry, filtration George. system. Mm -hmm. Let's switch back to you. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Um, sorry, I interrupted you, trampled all over you in that last couple of oh, seconds. Right, so, um, one of the things I wanted to know was 
you know, you said you're a small a small startup at the moment. We know what what stage are you at, and uh, tell us a bit more about what the roadmap is. Uh, yeah, so we are fairly early stage. We've got a great team of ten, uh, usually based in Bristol. Obviously, now spread around the country. Um, we are about two years old as an organisation, um, and I guess we're coming now into our sales period where we've done a lot of R&D, a lot of user testing, a lot of trial and error. Uh, we're now working with some of the largest pension providers um, in the UK in order to like make sure this tool, the solution reaches end consumers. Um, and then from there, I guess the idea is um, scale in, from, in, from a consumer point of view. We to have impact, we need lots of voices to be heard. So we need to be going through lots of different providers and reaching consumers over the UK, in Europe, and, and ideally in other countries, specifically the US and Australia, really good markets uh, where, where people care about their pensions and, and have a lot of money invested there, which means there's a lot of impact to be made. Um, so yeah, for us, it's just being focused, um, making sure that we do a good job with the first couple of providers we work with, and then scaling from there. Fantastic. Well, you know, that's amazing to hear about today. I love that sort of accessibility that you're giving to people. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd love you to come back and uh, give us an update as you progress and, you know, how things are going. So, uh, but for today, thanks so much indeed for joining us, Georgia. I really enjoyed that. No problem. Thanks for having me.